and everything. Well, let me just go ahead and officially start this off. So I want to welcome you to the uh, February 24th, 2021 REI USA uh, first presentation on the Supergroup Short Sale Profits. And I am David Randolph, your instructor. We'll be doing these monthly. Currently right now, they are on the fourth Wednesday every month. So make sure that you uh, sign up. We will be do going through some uh, critical steps to how to do a short sale in today's uh, tough economic environment. And so we'll uh, have one hour long sessions uh, is what that we're kind of limited to a bit. And uh, we'll go through, you know, each step of the process. Uh, and then we will, um, you know, get through, you know, all those important things that we need to need to have uh, with it and stuff. So let me uh, hang on a second here, get this to sharing the screen on here. Do that, check that, change that, and then hit that box and we'll be up and running, I think. Okay, and then swap them so that you see a bigger picture. Okay, there we go. We should have uh, what we need here. Okay, so, um, okay, here we go. So, um, there we go. Uh, Janet, can you see the uh, slides, the PowerPoint slide I have, an introduction to short sale profits on it? Okay, great. So uh, we'll just let everybody else go ahead and come on in as they come in, and I will have to move along uh, for with everybody. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. So anyway, like I said, welcome to the uh, Short Sale Profits uh, group. Um, I am David Randolph. There's some of my contact information. It's in the chat box. Be sure to save the chat box with the three dots at the bottom of the chat box. So if you click on chat, on your uh, little uh, screen, uh, then it will bring up a box off the side somewhere and there'll be three dots right next to the two part. And uh, you click that, it will have save chat and you just click save chat. And then uh, you'll have uh, any uh, you know questions that people ask, post them in the chat box. Yeah, I know the slide's crooked, it's supposed to be. Um, somebody said that was, uh, I don't know why you make the slide crooked, but it's only the first slide, so I appreciate that with it. Um, so this is my contact information. You have, uh, you know, my information in the chat box. Uh, also, you can get a, a hold of me through various ways here. Uh, I do have a website, thedavidrandolph.com. Uh, if you want to get these slides and other free information, text the word short uh, to my cell number, 636. 685-2990 and I'll be glad to send you the slides. I never liked it when people presented and didn't give you the slides, right? Because it's hard to, you know, take all your notes down, <clears throat> you know, and keep up with everything. So uh, we can get you the slides and I can get you some other free information uh, as we go through the presentation. But uh, tonight uh, we're going to start out with the uh, intro, intro lesson to the very first one on it and this is going to be um, you know on uh, an introduction to short sale profits we will not cover all the critical steps tonight because uh, this is a, a monthly uh, instructional uh, training for you uh, so let's go ahead and see if i can make the, the slides move to the next slide that kind of thing here all right okay so oh we got that legal stuff okay so I am not an attorney, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a real estate agent even, and, and I don't even play any of those on television either. So uh, that's some of the legal stuff. In fact, you know, no part of this presentation, written or verbal, is meant to be tax or legal advice. Uh, this is actually my interpretation and my experience with short sales for the past 10 years. Okay, so this is gonna tell you what I, uh, no, from my experience uh, in short sales. Okay, I am the founder of Short Sale Profits. Um, you can get more information on that elsewhere later. I am the founder of thedavidrandolph.com. So please check out that website for lots of good information on there. Um, you know, I have learned from the best people out there 
local and national experts like some of them we talked about. Um, I pay a lot of money, I do a lot of research and I, and I learn from the best. And then what I do is I take that and make it better. I'm an engineer, okay? I'm a full-time entrepreneur with multiple businesses and income streams. I have a BS in chemical engineering and an MS in computer science. So that tells you I'm anal, okay? So that just lets you know right up front on it and stuff. You can uh, throw any snide comments in the chat box if you want. You can also throw your questions in there. If I see them, I'll answer them. If not, I'll stop later and I will answer them with it. So, um, you know, I retired from my corporate job in 2006 at the age of 42. Uh, my wife and I became full-time real estate investors in 2010. What happened between 2006 and 2010? Well, actually, I was blessed to be able to homeschool my two children. And they graduated high school and went to college in 2010. Hence, I became a full-time real estate investor. Okay. Um, and so I am just a small guy with small companies. You know, my Realty Renovator LLC buys, rehabs, and sells about five to 10 houses per year. Uh, one of my claims to fame is all my renovated houses, I've, you know, listed under 260,000, have sold in seven days or less at list price or higher for 10 years now. So my houses are drop dead gorgeous, okay? Um, you know, in uh, 2016, 17, and 18, actually all my rehab sold in two days or less at this price or above. I don't think you can get it less than two days because there's techniques that you do like calling for highest and best and, you know, certain procedures you want to follow. But, um, you know, the, that uh, there was, uh, they're all selling in two days back in those three years there. Typical profit that I make on a house is about $60,000 per house uh, because I negotiate and buy my houses as short sales. That's why I'm teaching you short sale profits for REI USA uh, with it. And so, um, you know, I work directly with the homeowner and the lender. Actually, I make fifty dollars to $150,000 profit on each house uh, negotiating short sales uh, with it. Um, you know, I've made so much money in real estate uh, that I lend out nearly $3 million out of my IRA uh, retirement accounts. You know, IRA is a generic term. Uh, you, there's, re, there's other uh, types of retirement vehicles to use. And I lend that to other rehabbers and wholesalers for about the past six years. So I've made a lot of money in real estate, a lot of money through short sales. Uh, keep in mind, this is the money that my wife didn't spend. It goes into my IRA uh, and stuff. Everything else she spent uh, with it and stuff. Uh, so the rest of it I lend out to other rehabbers uh, all across the nation. My private lending program uh, that I have provides all the money to buy the house, all the money to fix the house up, all the money for the points on the loan, and all the money for the monthly interest payments. So my heart and passion is to help you rehabbers on here uh, to be able to start uh, buying and renovating houses. Uh, in my lending program, uh, depending on exactly where you're at in the United States, um, and there's other uh, techniques that we use, uh, but in general, you can use my contractors, my material suppliers, and my SKU numbers. Remember that part about all my houses selling seven days or less at list price or higher. You might want to use my SKU numbers. You use my marketing program to sell your houses and a whole lot of other stuff here. Just kind of trying to get through the who is David Randolph part, okay? Um, you know, 2018, I started providing one-on-one -on -one real estate coaching and developed a couple of half-day uh, workshops on how to calculate the ARV in their rehab. You know, that came out of the lending program. A lot of people wanted my funding, uh, but they didn't know how to calculate the ARV or what the rehab cost was. So I developed some workshops there. Uh, in 2019, in July, I hit the stardom, boy, I was in Hollywood. I was asked to be the speaker uh, at a local RIA group uh, on short sales, the short story and short sales and introduction uh, to massive profits. And uh, 150 people showed up for that presentation, standing room only. Ever since then, it's been 
you know, glitter and, and sunlight and autographs and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, in 2019, then I started providing one-on-one -on -one short sale training and coaching along with three workshops and with group coaching. Um, so I've gotten so good at short sales. Um, I have a basic workshop, intermediate and advanced workshop. So uh, I am completely dedicated to short sales uh, with it. Now let's get into what short sales are. Okay, and you guys are gonna wanna take notes unless you text the word short uh, and get uh, all these slides with it. So what is a short sale? So I'm gonna go right with the basics, okay? Um, and yes, we will see some of the drop dead gorgeous houses here soon with it. Thanks for that question. Um, and uh, my website also has a properties tab with all of my houses you must look at. Go copy everything I do on thedavidrandolph.com, click on properties and copy everything you see in there. Okay, so um, what a short sale is, we'll go basic and we'll assume that nobody knows what they are. So we'll start out real simple and then we'll build up to, uh, to more about short sales and the critical steps involved. But, you know, a short sale uh, is where the homeowner you know, which will become the seller to you, right? You're an investor. Uh, they owe more than what they can get from selling the house. So if they put it on the market and sell it, the proceeds from that sale is not going to be enough uh, to pay off, um, you know, what they owe. Now, what a lot of people don't understand or remember is that it's not just the loan that they have, they have to pay off. And there's many things, okay? So you know, this includes the principal owed and any missed payments and penalties. It includes any second loans, equity lines of credit, judgments, tax liens. Uh, you know, normal sale of a house only brings, you know, about 90% of the list price with it. And so, you know, there's not, uh, you know, there's uh, not a lot of money left uh, when they sell it that has a lot of bills to pay off. Okay, so... Um, there's also, uh, you know, if there's a pending foreclosure coming up, you know, they usually only have, you know, 30 to 60 days to sell. Uh, a lot of states, and I'm going to try to be generic for the entire United States. I am in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I have uh, coaching students all across the nation, but, you know, I can't uh, recite all the rules for every state. We would be here all night. Um, so some of these will be referenced to Georgia. Missouri, uh, you know, uh, they're very similar states. And so, um, you know, with the pending foreclosure, there's only usually a couple months that they might be able to sell that house before it's too late. Uh, and so, uh, you know, legally in the state of Missouri, um, you know, it only requires posting an ad for 21 days in the county's legal newspaper. So that's, that's you know, uh, you know, what takes place. Georgia, it's 30 days. Uh, and so every county has a legal newspaper. Uh, and we'll go over that more later about how to find them. Uh, typically there's deferred maintenance and repairs that, that uh, need that a buyer can't afford to, to pay for. So that limits the uh, number of houses, uh, or, or sorry, not the number of houses, but limits the number of people that will buy the house because they don't have the funds to fix it up either when they buy the house on it. Uh, and so now most buyers cannot get a traditional loan uh, because the approval process takes uh, too long. Okay, so, uh, you know, the buyer of the house, right? So we have a foreclosure date. Uh, it's coming up in, you know, 20 days, 21 days. Uh, you try to find a buyer real quickly uh, to sell it. They're not going to be able to get a traditional loan that fast because it takes them too long to go through the approval process. Uh, so the, the seller's lender, the one that's foreclosing on them, uh, will not usually approve a buyer with a traditional loan versus cash. So keep that in mind. As an investor, when you're making an offer on a house, it must always be cash offer. The banks do not want to go through the whole process of a short sale and approving it to find out you can't get a loan to buy it, okay? So the lender requires the sale of the home to be as is. And this is because uh, they don't want the seller spending any money 
on the house uh, or repairs or anything because they want the money to come back to them. Uh, so if there's any you know dollars in the pocket of the seller, um, you know they want that to go back to the bank. So it has to be as is. Okay, the lender must approve the buyer, and the buyer cannot change. That's very important. Uh, you know, there's an approval process that the bank goes through. It includes that they must say it's okay for that buyer. Uh, and the buyer can't change later. It has to close with that person. Um, and the buyer can't be related to the seller. Uh, matter of fact, what you're really looking at is that the seller cannot be related to anybody uh, at all uh, in the transaction. They can't even be related to the title company. Uh, so the uh, buyer's agent, seller's agent, um, you know, they can't be related to any of the uh, agents. So you, you can't be the sister of, you know, the seller. Uh, they, you know, no, nobody can be related to the seller. It's very, very important. Um, you know, if there is a case where, where uh, they are related, uh, for example, uh, let's say that the realtor is the buyer of the house, uh, they'll cut the commission to zero, okay? Uh, so if you're a, the buyer and you are a realtor um, with the listing, then you're not going to get your 6% commission. Okay. Um, now here's some little things that you need to know about whenever you're doing a, a short sale. And <clears throat> let me stop here for a moment and, and make it really clear to everybody uh, that um, I am teaching you short sales from the investor perspective. I am not a realtor, as you know. I am an entrepreneur. I am making fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars profit on my two hundred and fifty thousand dollar houses here in St. Louis, Missouri, for ten years. I am not teaching you to be a realtor and list them for somebody else, and then to negotiate a short sale for a flat fee. That's not what I'm teaching. I'm teaching you how to negotiate with a bank so that you're able to get that house for a 50 to $150,000 profit. Um, you know, I do not advocate uh, flat fee negotiators for what I am teaching you. I am teaching you to be the negotiator. Uh, wouldn't you like the 50 to $150,000 profit? That's what I'm teaching you in all of my lessons and, and what I do with it. Um, and so, uh, one of the things you need to keep in mind uh, is the paperwork, which of course we won't go through all the paperwork tonight. This is just our first first uh, you know, uh, lesson tonight uh, with it. And so we'll go through that on another, you have to come back, you know, we'll go through paperwork on a different one, but keep in mind that the uh, lender actually needs the seller to have the ability to cancel the listing agreement. Uh, so there has to be special clauses in there and it's because you know they don't want something to go wrong in uh, the sale of the home, and the realtor comes and says, "Wait a minute, you owe me commission, even though it didn't go through." So there's actually some cancellation clauses and special things that have to go into your documents that are crucial. And one reason so many people don't like short sales is they don't understand the rules. You know, there's like 300 steps, and it's kind of like that Ocean's Eleven movie. Uh, with that oriental guy going through those laser beams to get to the vault uh, on it. And so, you know, if you don't know what those steps are, zap, you're dead, and, and you kind of start over with it. And so, but when you know those 300 steps, it's just beautiful music, and, and there's your, your jackpot at the end of the rainbow on it. Um, on non-FHA loans, okay, so, you know, in America, we have FHA loans, and we've got you know, conventional loans, Fannie Mae loans, Freddie Mac, VA. Well, you know, um, FHA loans is a government type loan. That's one category. Um, all the other loans that are not FHA, non-FHA non loans, um, the lender may put a deed restriction on the buyer. So yes, it is absolutely true uh, that the buyer cannot sell the house within 30 days for any price. Is, does that sound un-American? It absolutely does sound un-American. Uh, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. Uh, the, when you do a short sale, that buyer uh, has a 
uh, deed restriction on that house, uh, the title to the house, you know, the warranty deed, it has special language in it that says it cannot be sold within 30 days. And furthermore, it cannot even be sold for more than a 20% profit within the first 90 days. And that's regardless of how much rehab money you put into it. You could put a hundred thousand dollars into it and it would, uh, Hey, Ron Hill, go ahead and drop your contact info in the chat box and be sure to save that over there. People, more people coming in. I hope everybody's making it in okay with it and stuff. So, um, and drop any questions in there. I'll either catch them at the end or try and catch them, uh, you know, as we go along, which I'm not so good at the hand to eye coordination on it. So keep this in mind non FHA loans, they cannot sell it uh, for 90 days. Now, we get into some advanced materials. I have a way to actually wholesale it the same day, uh, but that's an advanced technique and, uh, you know, it can be done, but it's uh, not many people know how to do that with it. Uh, but in general, they'll have to hang on to it for 90 days. Okay. So the lender requires a series of documents to be submitted for approval. Okay. So there's a couple main documents that we're going to just briefly talk about. This is an, an intro, you know, to the critical steps tonight uh, with it and stuff. And, um, you know, and so basically, um, you know, you've got an RMA form, that's a request for mortgage assistance. That comes from the bank. The bank will give that to you uh, off their website or they will email it to you. Uh, that uh, request for mortgage assistance, assistance is like an application. And it has a lot of stuff you have to provide. Uh, you've got to provide two months bank statements, a hardship letter, uh, two pay stubs. You know, they have to approve the seller financially that they qualify for doing a short sale. It, you know, look, if they've got $100,000 in the bank, you know, they're, they're not going to qualify. You know, they signed a promissory note. They owe the money. Okay. And so if they've got the money, they have to, they have to pay that. Okay. Uh, and stuff. And so, um, everybody get on there so um then the other set of documents is what i call realtor documents okay so uh you got bank documents and realtor documents and so those are the listing agreement special sales contract short sale rider uh special sales contract that's your short form purchase sale contract in essence remember i told you it has to be cash offer has to be as is and that is your generally referred to special sales contract, probably in uh, most uh, states uh, there with it uh, and stuff. Um, and uh, I'll go ahead and drop my contact info back in there for those who uh, came in late uh, with it. Um, and then uh, some of the other documents that you have are a contractor estimate, comps, uh, letter of explanation. This is your what I call wiggle room, okay? Uh, you know, this is how you how you get the fifty thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollar profit uh, on each house is you know some of these tools here with your comps, your uh, letter of explanation. How are you presenting it to the bank? Okay, I want you to kind of keep uh, one thing in mind. Uh, you know, the banks are a big six hundred pound gorilla, and they're going to tell you exactly what they're going to pay for the house. Okay, matter of fact, they're going to do. Uh, a broker price opinion called BPO, uh, and they're going to they're going to determine what the value of the house is. Uh, on FHAs, they actually require a full bona fide by the book appraisal with it. So, needless to say, I will tell you that uh, FHA short sales are the ones I make the least amount of money on. Definitely that fifty thousand uh, dollar side of profit level because they are doing a full appraisal. Uh, with it and stuff. And so, um, you know, now, you know, with all this documentation and all this process you go through, the whole end result is what's called an approval letter. It's a document, a letter from the bank that's going to say uh, that you have an approval for the buyer to buy the house and to come to closing and that the bank will accept a very, very low price for it uh, and stuff. And now that letter uh, now it takes, you know, three months to nine months to get that letter. Okay. So it, it's not fast. And if you want a really low price, it's going to take even longer, right? Because um, you're not moving into the house, you're not going to live in it. So, you know, it's not important for you, uh, you know, to 
speed things up. You would rather uh, dispute the valuation. You'd rather go back and forth uh, and do other techniques to get the price down. Uh, now, when you do get that approval letter on it, it's going to state a lot of uh, items that we're not going to go through tonight because uh, we don't have time. Uh, you know, once again, you'll have to come back for another lesson uh, with uh, REI USA. Uh, and so basically, uh, you um, will have 30 days to close that, though. So that's kind of an important window where you have an approval letter. You know what the price is. Um, that might be a good time for you to go find another buyer. So if you're not rehabbing houses like I am and you're going to wholesale it, you got, you know, up to 30 days to kind of go out there and kind of do a little, you know, marketing on that and try and see if you can find somebody to, to sell it to uh, with it and stuff. And, you know, there's a lot of nuances with that statement that I made, but, you know, I just want to point out that you will have a, in writing a letter that says everything's good to go. Okay. Um, and so the, the lender negotiates the sales price to the house, okay? Uh, and a lot of people don't realize that they're actually looking at the net to the bank. And this isn't about what the actual price of the house is, okay? Uh, you know, this is more about, um, you know, what, how much does the bank get? So there can be a lot of liens and a lot of other things, uh, you know, that um, people, um, you know, subtract off, you know, like second liens, um, you know, taxes. And so that's all the bank really cares is the net. Uh, they'll also, uh, you know, negotiate, um, you know, with the listing agent or with the short sale processor. So you can be the short sale processor slash negotiator and have a completely separate realtor for the listing agent. Or you could be the listing agent and the short sale negotiator. Uh, there are several uh, techniques and methods with doing that. Uh, and we may have one, one lesson on that also about who is on your team, right? Okay, because there's going to be a team of people involved in this uh, with it. Because you can have a buyer, you can have a seller, you're going to have a listing agent, you're going to have a uh, selling agent or a buyer's agent, right? Uh, and everything. So there's a lot of people involved in that. Uh, and so, um, you know, uh, and, and just uh, kind of let you know, banks don't really look at you as a short sale negotiator. Uh, because the bank's not negotiating, <laughs> okay? Uh, you're a processor of paperwork. Uh, you know, you're not a negotiator because uh, the banks are going to tell you exactly what the price is. They're a 600-pound gorilla. They, they are forcing me into making fifty dollars to $150,000 profit. I had no choice but to accept their approval letter and close on it. Uh, so anyway, it's very important to know that all parties involved uh, to be unrelated on paper. That's a blanket statement that I won't really go into, but, you know, all parties involved need to be unrelated on paper. And that, you know, goes into um, a little bit about entities, right? Okay, what is an entity? Uh, did you know that you have more than one name? You really do, okay? Um, I know I've got multiple names. I've got David Randolph, comma, president, David Randolph, comma, manager, I've got just David Randolph. Um, there's a lot of names and each one is a legal representation. So that's what I'm saying. It's important for all parties to be uh, unrelated on paper, okay? So why do we do them? Why do we do short sales, okay? Uh, you know, the borrower, the homeowner, the seller. So we got like three names here. The borrower, that's what the bank sees. That's the person that has a loan. Uh, they also uh, own the house, but they don't always own the house. Keep that in mind, okay? Uh, they could be divorced and then one of them moved out. So they are not the legal owner of the house. You know, there could have been a divorce. Uh, and then the seller is what you want to get them to. You, you want them to be a seller. You want to be the buyer or one of your entities to be the buyer, okay? But anyway, the borrower, homeowner, seller will be foreclosed if the bank's not paid in full, uh, you know? Um, and so that's, that's the problem. They will foreclose and take the house back if they are not paid in full, okay? The borrower will have a deficiency in most all states. Uh, Arizona is an exception to that, but uh, the borrower will have a deficiency, which is basically the difference between what they owe on the loan and what the house actually ends up selling for. In other words, it's, it's how much the homeowner still owes the bank, 
Okay. And that, and that balance, um, you know, the, so the borrower will have a deficiency and owe that amount that the bank doesn't recover from selling it. Uh, now, that's versus getting a $3,000 check at closing from the bank. So yes, in a short sale, uh, almost all the time, you know, let's call it, you know, 90% uh, of the time, uh, you're able to get the bank to pay the seller uh, between $1,500 and $3,000 uh, to move out. So that's a big difference, right? Uh, the seller can actually get money, not from you ever, but rather from the bank. Um, and so uh, the borrower uh, will have a, a 300 point hit on his credit score for five to seven years if they get foreclosed. Okay, so this is why you wanna do a short sale. The borrower doesn't wanna take this huge hit on their credit score, okay? Um, the borrower might have to file bankruptcy uh, to stop the foreclosure, uh, which is gonna hurt the credit re uh, report for five years, okay? And then guess, it, guess what, guys, what happens? Most people don't know this. They file bankruptcy, they wipe the debt to zero, but then in a bankruptcy, the bank has to turn around and foreclose on the property anyway in order to get legal title to be able to sell the house. Now you've got the bankruptcy on your record and you got the foreclosure on your record. And see, bankruptcy attorneys never tell the seller that information with it. They say, just let me do a bankruptcy for you and we'll wipe your debt out. And that's true, but then they have the foreclosure. Short sale avoids uh, both of those. Uh, the borrower must move out prior to the foreclosure date versus staying in there the whole time you're negotiating. Uh, these are key reasons. So guys, you need to be writing this stuff down. Uh, this is what you wanna tell the seller. Uh, I want you out there talking to sellers and helping them. And these are the the talking points that you want. Like I said before, text the word short uh, to 636-685-2990 and I'll send you all the slides. Uh, if you don't do that, then please write this stuff down because this is what you need to tell uh, the seller. They will have to move out before the foreclosure date. They will not legally own that house, okay? Uh, and so during the short sale, they, they're staying in the home, taking care of the home, um, and they're usually not making any monthly payments because they don't have the money to make monthly payments. Uh, and so in a short sale, the borrower will get to start over. They're able to save up their money while the short sale is being negotiated. So they get a fresh start. That's a very good reason uh, why they should uh, do a short sale. Okay, gratification out of helping families. Okay, they cry at the closing table with relief. Um, I, I would say, over 70% of the short sales I do, the family, the homeowners are so happy at the closing that they are actually crying because they have so much joy that the burden of this debt and even the house that was maybe run down, needed repairs, is off of their responsibility with it. I'm crying because I'm going to make fifty dollars to $150,000 profit. Uh, so we're both crying at the closing with it and stuff. But um, uh, the buyer, uh, you know, now, so why are we doing short sales? The, the buyer is going to bring up the value of homes in the subdivision because we're rehabbers. We're going to restore it. We're going to sell it at a higher price. You know, we are very valuable to the banks. You know, in the old days, they wouldn't sell to LLCs because we were businesses. They would only sell to uh, to a single mom or they would sell to a, you know, a person, uh, you know, and then they realize that actually LLCs are, are able to bring something to the party by one, having the cash and, you know, we don't need a loan. We pay cash for our houses. Then we fix them all up and then someone buys it and gets a loan with that very same bank, you know, and so it's a win-win. So now LLCs are very well accepted, uh, you know, with the bank as a buyer. You know, we buyers, we rehabbers, we provide lots of jobs to a lot of people, okay, instead of that house sitting there, you know, year after year decaying uh, and stuff like that, okay. So why do we do them? Okay, here's, you know, kind of one good reason. I think, uh, you know, everybody's heard of, you know, the thing in real estate, uh, location, 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 right? Well, in short sales, it's massive profits, massive profits, massive profits, okay. 
uh, you know, that's, that's uh, also a reason why we do them. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples, okay? And once again, um, you know, this won't be the drop dead gorgeous houses uh, because I can only have one slide and I don't have all night either with it. So, um, and we have a lot of slides to go through. So my website, thedavidrandolph.com, you can see it at the bottom, go to my website, click on the properties tab, and you'll see this house all fixed up and all pretty and everything that I did with it. But uh, so I'm gonna show you some examples of houses, uh, short sales that I have done. Um, uh, you know, I've done, you know, I haven't done thousands of short sales. You know, I do five to 10 houses a year. I'm making, you know, $100,000 on a house. I've got 3 million in my IRA. This is not about volume production. This is not about doing 50 or 100 short sales a year. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I couldn't rehab that many. You know, I can only rehab about 12 houses a year. Uh, you know, if I wholesaled some of my short sales, then yes, you could do more short sales. Uh, but, you know, it's, for me, it's the quality of life with it uh, and stuff. So, you know, it's not like you're, you're trying to get a lot of short sales, um, you know, that you're trying to do. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I almost recommend you, you have some other job uh, because they don't take that much time to do a short sale and it's spread out over a period of time uh, or sit on the beach too or something maybe. But uh, anyway, let's look at some examples. Um, so I'm very open. You can look all this stuff up on public records, full addresses shown here. You know, go, go look up all these numbers here. Okay, so let me show you some short sales that I've done. Okay, so this house, I rehabbed it. So, you know, you're gonna wanna know, did I wholesale the house? Uh, did I rehab the house? What kind of houses am I doing short sales on? What should you target and look for with homeowners, uh, you know, before you decide to do that short sale, you know, with them uh, and stuff? And so you want to, you know, know what I've done before, okay? Uh, so this particular house was rehabbed. Uh, the sales price was $205,000. Uh, I had six offers in two days. Five of them were over the list price of 185. And guess what, guys? I made the appraisal. Is that pretty amazing? Uh, you know, for my rehabbers on the call here, um, it's very rare for us rehabbers uh, to have uh, always made an appraisal from the buyer. Well, we might put it up at a high price and we might find a buyer that'll, that'll pay a high price for our house, but then the bank's lender steps in does their appraisal and says, no, no, the appraisal writer, it's not worth what they're wanting to offer you. And though they, they knock it down, okay? Well, I'll tell you, I have, for, it was, for eight years in a row straight, I never missed a single appraisal uh, on my rehabs. And that's because of uh, my, uh, you know, uh, techniques. Yeah, Mike, you made it, all right. Uh, I came in a little late there, but that's okay, Mike. Uh, you gotta go check out Mike's uh, wholesale stuff, okay? with it on uh, the, uh, go to the, uh, go sign up for that uh, on REI USA with it. Um, so the rehab cost was $71,000 on this house. It was about a 1300 square foot house. Um, and so that may sound like a lot of money, but it was a full rehab. So when you're doing everything, you know, it just keeps adding up, right? So we had new floors, new cabinets, you know, new granite, uh, you know, so I sold it for 205. I put 71 in it. So what would you have paid for this house? Okay, uh, so so uh, what would you have paid? Okay, so um, two hundred and five. So put it in the chat box. So you sold it for two hundred and five, and you put seventy one thousand into it. Okay, so uh, people put that. You know, put your uh, what would you have paid for it? So obviously, if I put seventy one thousand in it, I had to pay less than one hundred thirty three, or I would lose money, and I wouldn't be able to pay my realtor. But how much less than one hundred thirty three? would you have put, uh, paid for that? So you guys put, put some numbers in the chat box over here, okay? Uh, drop some numbers in on it. What would you have paid uh, for this house and been very happy and glad, uh, you know, with the profit that you, that you would get? Okay, let's put some, so nobody's putting any numbers in, okay? So drop some numbers in there. So, you know, less than 133,000, otherwise you'd lose money. 65, good. Uh, uh, Janet, that's a good guess there. Let's do something here. Uh, let's use the Mayo formula. If it sold for 205, and let's say we multiply by 0.75, and then we subtracted 
71,500 off of it. Okay, whoops, I messed that up. I think it's around uh, $80,000 or something like that. Let me do it again on it. Uh, hang on, 205 times that, 71,000, subtract. Yeah, that would have been around about $85,000 would be the mail calculation. Uh, 55, good, I like cheap people, okay? Good, good, good. You guys are all well qualified for short sales, okay? Because uh, uh, you don't want to do mayo at all. This is short sales. We're special people. Okay. Uh, so what would you have paid to buy this house? Okay. But, okay, you guys haven't graduated yet. You paid way too much because I paid 33900 for this house. Okay. I made $99,600 profit. Okay. On this house with it. Um, so, uh so does that answer the question of why why I do short sales? Okay, well, if not, okay, then fine. If that doesn't answer the question of why to do it, let's look at another one. Here's a full address. Look it up on public records. Okay, this is uh, here. Uh, nice. Uh, I like the trees and everything in this house. This was a hoarder house, by the way. Uh, and th this was a, there's a level of beyond hoarder. You know, hoarders will stack things up and leave a little pathway down the hall. I mean, it'll only be a foot wide, right? And, and they got stuff stacked everywhere. Dishes, uh, uh, an apple on a plate in the middle of the hallway. This person was so bad at hoarding uh, that they put uh, things in the pathway that you had to step on uh, with it and stuff. Okay, so I sold this house for $274,000. It was rehabbed. I made the appraisal. I guess I've already said I've made all mine, so I don't have to repeat that. Uh, once again, this was also a $79,000 rehab, full rehab. Uh, you know, I put in granite, I put in new cabinets. Uh, I don't know if we'll have time to, you just have to go to my website and look at my houses, okay, uh, with it. But um, uh, I don't, I'm not going to have time to bring my website over here uh, to look at my houses, but they're beautiful, new granite, everything. Uh, rehab cost was $79,000. Uh, on it and stuff. And so, um, okay, so what would you have paid for that house? Here we go again, get some answers out there. Otherwise we'll be here all night. So 74,000, okay, uh, is, is what I sold it for. And if we do Mayo and subtract 79,000 from that, okay. Um, so that's, so, so what would you have paid for that one? Oh, $5, Mike, all right. You, you're, you're, you now qualify to do short sales, okay. Because uh, one of the rules is if you don't laugh at your offer, it's too low, okay? And I would laugh at five bucks. So you qualify, Mike, to start doing short sales in your wholesale business. Any other, uh, anyone else? Um, well, for the sake of time, Mayo is $130,000. What would you have paid for it? Um, I didn't do so good. I paid 65000 for it. I only made 129000 on this house. You know, not that good, okay? with it, paid 65,000, put 79 in it, and sold it for 274,000 and everything. And that's a good number, Alka, on it, okay. Um, okay, does that answer the question why, why, do short, why do short sales on it? Okay, well, if not, let's look at another one, okay. Uh, okay, now, this house here, um, here's that house, okay. I sold this for $389,000, okay. Uh, it was a rehabbed house. Um, I put about 80000 in it, too. Um, kind of getting an idea what rehabs cost, don't you? About $80,000 with it. Um, now, you know, some things trade off. You know, I've got to finish the basement. Maybe the roof I didn't have to do uh, with it and stuff like that. So uh, 389000 put seventy nine into it. What would you have paid on the house? If you want to throw it in there, go ahead. But I'm not going to wait for you because we're running out of time. Okay. I paid 168,000 for the house. I made $141,000 on this short sale, vacation bound. This is where I cry every time I think about this house because and I will cry and I have to apologize for crying. But when that house sold and they wired that money to my bank account, I called my wife up and I said, you book that trip to that island and we're spending a week on vacation because if you make that kind of money and you can't take your wife 
on a vacation, there's something wrong with you. So I call that the vacation bound house. Okay, we flew, uh, we flew the next day, flew on a plane. It was that late, it was that close, it was like immediate. Now, before you think I'm a sentimental loving husband, I will have to confess, we flew to a real estate conference on an island. Okay, so it was a business write-off. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a vacation, okay, because it was all you can eat uh, on the island, and that was fantastic. So does that answer the question why we do short sales? Okay, if not, then let's look at another one. Now, I'm going to show you this house because this is an example of one that didn't need any work. So you're going to say, David, are you always doing short sales on hoarder houses or houses that need a lot of rehab? Uh, no, not at all. This is an example of a house that was like maybe 10 years old, eight years old, had granite countertops. It didn't need anything. Okay. Now I did do $31,000 in rehab because I felt guilty. I'm a rehabber. I had to finish the basement. It was an unfinished basement. Uh, so I did paint carpet, already had granite. Um, and I finished the basement because I, I felt guilty. So I sold it for $223,000, put thirty two dollars in it. So that's like, you know, 180. So, you know, what would you pay for that house? 110,000. I made $81,000 on a house that was eight years old with granite countertops, wood floors, uh, a, what's called a pretty house in our industry, okay? $81,000. So you don't have to go do short sales on houses that are uh, in um, bad shape, okay? So does that answer the question? Okay, well, if not, let's look at another one. Okay, let's fly through these because we're out of time. Okay, this is an example where I wholesale a house to another rehabber. Okay, so this was a rehab house. You know, you normally wholesale a house and you make five or $10,000. You know, if you talk to Mike, he'll show you how to probably make more money uh, with it. But, you know, you don't, you know, wholesaling, you, you know, you usually, you know, make $5,000 on a house uh, and stuff. So this one, I wholesaled to somebody else. I had, you know, $22,000 in holding costs, you know, and stuff like that. But I sold it to another rehabber, you know, uh, you know, in five days with it. Uh, you know, what would you pay for that house? I paid 88,000. I made 30 grand on a wholesale, okay? I, and this house is, I sold it for 120, is probably worth 250, okay? A uh, rehabber put some money in it. And he made a lot of money. I leave meat on the bone. I'm a very good wholesaler. I leave lots of meat on the bone with it. Okay. Does that answer the question of why you do short sales? Okay. Well, one more. Here's an example, once again, of a house that um, I did nothing to it. $2,000. My son screwed down the squeaky floors. That's all we did. We sold it for $240,000 in cash. Okay. What would you pay for that house? I paid one hundred fifty-eight. dollars I made 80 grand screwing down some plywood so the floor didn't squeak. So the story here is you should go after all kinds of short sales, not try to target it. Uh, another example, this is the same thing. I did $7,000 uh, with it. I did sell it retail. Um, I bought it for that. I made $85,000 on a house that didn't need any work by doing short sales, okay? Uh, okay, so does that answer the question? You want to see another one? Okay. Um, here's an example of one uh, that in 2020 here that I did. Um, I uh, sold it for 275 and I bought it for 29,000. I put 80 in it. That's like $150,000. Here's another one that was FHA. You don't make much money off of those. I made, uh, you know, I uh, put 140 in it. I made 80,000 on an FHA short sale. That's you make the least money on those. So that answers the question. Okay. Well, let's look at another one. Okay. I'm just kidding. Okay. We don't have all night. Okay. Uh, so now how do we get them? Okay. I think we're going to run a little over our hour time frame, guys, because we have a lot of slides to go through here with it. Um, so uh, once again, you know, I'm going to be showing you all the critical steps to how to do a short sale. Uh, it's not going to be all done in one hour. Um, you know, text the word short uh, if you want to get the one critical document that you need to do um, everything that I just showed you I did. 
text the word short to 636-685-2990 and I will give you for free the document, the one document you need that will let you do everything that I just showed you. You have to have this document or you go nowhere. Okay, with this document, you can do everything that you need. It gives you that ability to do that. So text the word short for a free document. Uh, we don't sell stuff on REI USA. We give things away for free. Okay, and so I'm giving you something for free. Uh, the appraisal is paid for by the bank. Uh, remember, they're the 600 pound gorilla. You're, you know, they are covering the cost of the appraisal slash BPO. In the case of a BPO, they're paying that uh, realtor 50 bucks to do it. If it's a full appraisal, you know, it's the normal 400. Uh, you do not pay for that. You never spend money on a short sale ever, okay, with it. So anyway, there's a dot one document you need to be able to do this. Uh, text the word short to 636-685-2990. That's my free gift as being part of this uh, group for you. Okay. Now, how do you get them? Okay. Uh, so I'm going to show, you know, so take notes or, or, or text the word short so you can get these slides, but take these notes down. I'm giving you real stuff here. Okay. So, you know, when I first started out, you know, how do I get these people? Where do I find these sellers? Okay. And basically, you know, I, I kind of said to myself, hey, you know, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, your yearning to breathe free. That's the people you're seeking. That's the people you're looking for. That's the people who will turn to you. They, they need help. They are struggling. Okay. Uh, they need to like you. They need to believe you can help them in some way. You know, you're not going to talk to them on the phone and say, hey, David said I can make fifty dollars to $150,000 profit on your house. Would you let me do a short sale? That's not what you do. You must have a heart for these people and help them out in their situation, okay, uh, with it. Okay, so how do you get them? So marketing is a big part of how to get short sales. You know, if a tree falls, you know, the ground in the woods doesn't make a noise, okay? Well, where are the trees at? Let's go to where they are. Okay, we know that any failed short sale becomes a foreclosure, right? So a foreclosure is a failure of you not doing your job, okay? I'm going to repeat that. A foreclosure is a failure on your part not to do the short sale, okay? So a short sale will result in the foreclosure being stopped, the foreclosure not taking place. It can even result in the foreclosure process not even starting, if you get them at a certain point. But we know a foreclosure is publicly posted in the legal newspaper for the county that you're in, okay? So let's go after these people, let's get them, okay? In all states, the lender is required to post the legal description uh, and the borrower's name for 21 days. Uh, now, I'm using the example here of uh, you know Missouri, um, but this is, you know, some certain, you know, number of days with it um, and stuff. And so, um, you know, that to post it for 21 days straight in the legal newspaper, um, you know, uh, whatever county the property is located in. So we're going to target, you know, those people. Um, Georgia's 30 days. Uh, other states have different days. Some states are judicial, non-judicial. We'll cover that in other lessons, judicial versus non-judicial. Let me put the rest, though, about that. Judicial versus non-judicial on a short sale only changes how you market. It does not, does not change the process for the short sale, okay? It only changes how you find the people. The actual process of coming to an approval letter has the same steps that I'll be showing you on uh, if you keep coming back to my uh, lessons here with it. Uh, hey, good, got some more people in here. Uh, so anybody that came in new, post your contact info in there uh, and share it with other people. You missed our meet and greet session in the beginning, but uh, you know if you're a painter, realtor, investor, put drop that in the chat box. Drop any uh, questions uh, in there on it. Um, so we're going to target these people. Okay. So how do we get them? These people are desperate because in X number of days they're not going to have any place to live. Okay. Um, everything they have tried has not worked. Both the lender and the borrower, 
Okay, they've given up. It's coming to a foreclosure date. Okay, so everything has not worked that they've tried already. Um, the, the, the seller is willing to provide anything needed to stop or postpone the foreclosure, okay? So you're looking for people that are willing to give you what you need to help them stop something they couldn't stop, okay? So that's the kind of person that you're looking for, okay? If the seller could have found a buyer for their house, they would have already done that, okay? They would have sold it. You lose your job, you sell your house. That's America, okay? And you move to a smaller house, uh, you know, so they would have found a buyer if they could have already. Um, they don't expect to get any money from the sale of the house. Keep that in mind. Uh, you know, your goals are aligned with the seller and the bank. Both want the loan paid off. So you are aligned perfectly with the seller and the bank. So we're all working together to achieve the same goal, okay? Um, you know, you can uh, give them much more time in the house with no payments. You have methods to satisfy the lender's requirements. You know what they want. Okay, so now you may have to come back for a couple more lessons, but see the seller doesn't know what the bank really wants, but you do. I already showed you some of the documents, talked about the documents earlier. You are willing to get them from the borrower, anything that the bank needs, okay? So you will be the liaison between the homeowner and the bank to get what the bank needs to give the approval. Um, you have a buyer for the house, okay? It might be one of your entities. It, it might not be one of your entities, uh, but you have uh, the buyer that is going to pay cash as is. Um, you're going to get the seller, the homeowner, some money to move 90% of the time. Never promise them money to move. Only promise them that you will find out how much you can get them. That creates curiosity on their part, right? Uh, and stay. if you answer all their questions, then you know, they are not going to want to do some of the steps that we have to go through. Um, you're going to get the bank paid off. The seller gets rid of the debt forever, forever. They will have no deficiency. You do not do a short sale where the buyer owes the money. Yeah. Do you think I can make $150,000 profit on a house and know that the seller owed the, dif the difference? That when I paid $29,000 for that house, that the seller had to make it up? No way. So you, you have integrity. You have to um, be able to uh, get that deficiency removed on it and stuff uh, and everything. So um, uh, great, Mike, you got your contact in the info in there. He's our, our Mr. Wholesaler guy uh, with it and stuff. Um, so um, you're going to get them uh, you know, paid off. The debt's gone and some buyer investor now owns the house. Okay, where do you find them? Okay, we're running out of time. Okay, so where to find them? Okay, uh, the simplest way is to look where the foreclosures are at. Okay, go to the legal newspaper for that county. Look for online access. Write that. Write this down, guys. If you're not getting the slides, write this down. Go to the legal newspaper for the county you're in and get the online access to the legal newspaper. I just threw out, you know, uh, for Missouri, uh, it's, you know, this website here for, you know, Missouri and St. Louis and Kansas City. I can't show you everybody's on here. Matter of fact, I just put a slide in here. Come back for the next lesson, and I'm going to show you how to use uh, the internet to find the names and addresses. I had to take all the slides out because it just there was, wasn't going to be enough, okay? Uh, so I just put this little placeholder in, come back again. Uh, to one of our my presentations in the short sale profits group, uh, and I'll show you how to use the internet to find those names and addresses. Now, what do you send them? You know, okay, you know, where do you where where to find them? What do you send to them? Okay, mail them a letter, tell them you want to buy their house. Mail them a letter and tell them that you can help them. Okay, let them know that that you can help them avoid foreclosure and save their credit. Uh, tell them that they have options. Uh, you know, and you know what those options are that are best for them. Tell them that there's no out-of-pocket fees. Okay, so in other words, you are never charging them money, ever. You're not modifying their loan. You need a license to do that. They will never pay you to help them with the short sale. Okay, that needs to be very clear with that. And so therefore, there's no out-of-pocket fees. Okay, uh, mail them a letter. 
okay, and tell them you can pay cash as is. Okay, tell them the sooner they call, the more options they have left. You know, as time gets closer to foreclosure date, the number of options go down. Mail them a letter and let them know the foreclosure date. Okay, that may seem strange, but sometimes, you know, their head is so far in the sand that they don't even know what the actual date is with it. Okay, so, um, so come back for the next lesson on how to market to get them to call. So I had a things in here about, you know, what do you say to them? Uh, but I knew I wasn't going to have time. Uh, and so, um, you know, this is, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, critical steps to the short sale process. And, and this is one of them. So come back for the next lesson on how to market to get them to call, uh, you know, and then, you know, what you're going to say to them. Okay. So here's where I had a script. Could I have a volunteer, please? Well, okay, I, I don't have time to do that. Uh, and stuff. Uh, and so it's an actual type script uh, of a conversation. There's some key areas, okay, in that, you know, we're talking about the, you know, uh, they have so many years, the bank has so many years to come get the debt from them. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of people don't know that. And we would look it up for your state. The credit hit for foreclosure and bankruptcy is not nearly as great as a short sale. A short sale hurts you for one year and about 50 points with it. Uh, what do you say to them? Okay. Um, you know, some of the things, you know, that, that take place are, um, you know, that they uh, cannot net as much as a sales price if they try to sell it, you know, that there's costs. In other words, you know, and you use this on any negotiation with a seller. Uh, you always say to them, well, if you list it for that, you're, you know, only going to get, you know, so much out of it. Okay. You know, 90%. Uh, you know, but always absolutely let the seller know that you intend to make a profit. Okay, so they know your motive. Okay, they need to understand, you know, I, I tell this, uh, well, I'm going to skip what I tell them because then we'll keep on going. But, you know, you need to let them know that you are going to fix house up and sell it. Okay, um, you know, worth it. Uh, be open with them. Okay, so um, hey, we we're only a little bit behind on it and stuff. Okay, so in summary, you can make a lot of money negotiating short sales directly with the bank as an investor. You can help families out of a crisis that is still occurring today, big time, okay? I wanted to spend the whole hour on the current state of the pandemic and the market, but I really wanted a base lesson to kind of get you an idea of what a short sale definition actually is. Uh, with it, we can do more analysis of markets in the future with it, but um, you know, I've been doing it for 11 years. I never got the memo to stop doing short sales. I've got almost 3 million in my IRA accounts because I kept doing short sales pre-pandemic, okay? Now today, there are five times as many short sales. So let me kind of you know summarize this uh, here with it. In a short sale, there's no competition with other buyers or the seller. How many people have struggle with putting an offer in on the house and it's on the MLS or it's from a wholesaler and they're getting multiple bids on the house. There is no competition. There is no other buyer on a short sale. The seller does not care what the price is. How many times are you negotiating with a seller to sign a contract? He wants one price. You want another price. Zippo, non-existent in a short sale. Is that beautiful? Is that one darn good reason to start doing short sales as one of your methods of buying houses. There is no competition with other buyers or with the seller. Uh, Pre-pandemic, in my area, there were 40 foreclosures a month where I live in my county. In St. Louis itself, there were 300 per month pre-pandemic. I do five to 10 a year. Out of that 40 foreclosures a month, I needed one. That's all I needed. Okay, today there are five X that number. Okay, and, and it's basically rising. Uh, so short sales are out there. And here's another little summary definition for you also. Okay, uh, you know, you, you know uh, the definition of a short sale is the homeowner missed one payment. A short sale is not someone who has a foreclosure date. It is not a foreclosure date. 
All you have to do is have the seller miss one house payment. Guess what? That's everybody in the forbearance program right now, right? So you just need to reach out to those people. They can do a short sale with it. Um, so anyway, um, you know, I want to kind of open it up to any chat box questions uh, with it. I think you can raise your hand and talk probably too somehow uh, with it. But I want, uh, you know, to put my contact info on there. Uh, text short to get the slides, uh, get the critical uh, information, critical document that I talked about for free uh, with it. My website's the davidrandolph.com. You can get more information from there. Click the properties tab. Look at all my beautiful houses that I rehab. Copy what I do if you want to sell in seven days or less uh, and stuff. I, and I put some other information about lending in the chat box. Uh, if you text the word lend to the same phone number, 636-685-2990, I can give you my lending document uh, for that. So anyway, uh, what uh, questions do we have about short sales? We're a little bit over on time. Apologize for that. But uh, if there are any questions, do that raise your hand thing somewhere. And uh, will you, I can somehow let you speak out loud. If you don't want to type in the chat box uh, with it, um, uh, otherwise uh, I'll go over and take a quick look at the chat box and see what questions we have with it. Um, okay, so what what's different about the short sale process in a judicial state to a non-judicial state? So the short sale process technically um, is the same. Uh, you missed some of the earlier slides, Mike, but uh, there is an RMA uh, form package from the bank's website that you fill out. And then there's what are called the realtor documents. See, that's the short sale process. All of those documents are identical whether the state is a judicial state or non-judicial state. And so the definition of judicial simply means that in a judicial state, the bank has to go to a judge and go to the court system to get the house back. And that means that it takes longer. It can take uh, three months, six months, Illinois it's 14 months. In a non-judicial state, um, there's no judge. They only post the name and address in a legal newspaper for X number of days. And that's dependent on your state. I think Arizona's 30 days, Georgia's 30 days, Missouri's 21 days. Um, so the judicial process is only the length of time that the bank is going to take the house back. Actually, quite honestly, doing short sales in a judicial state is better. I, in Missouri, I have got to stop a foreclosure within 20 days. I got to bust my butt to stop the bank. Okay, which is why right now with the forbearance program, this is a fantastic time to start doing short sales because you don't know what you're doing yet. And you don't have to stop the foreclosure date because there isn't one perfect storm for you guys okay with it and stuff um so anyway any uh, any other questions guys uh with it um and everything so uh okay here yeah click uh, all panelists and attendees so we can see all your contact info please okay so hopefully everybody can see everyone's contact info with it uh okay let me do this here okay mike go ahead and and talk. whoops you moved go ahead and talk mike can you hear me? Yes, Mike, we can hear you. All right. Uh, what uh, real estate conference did you go to on that vacation? Um, it was Jackie Lang, um, Cash Flow Depot. Uh, you remember uh, J uh, Jack? He's uh, he passed away, and Jackie Lang took over all of this material. Um, and it was on. Gosh, what was the? Uh, I don't know what the island was. It was all you can eat, uh, and all you could drink. And it was all you could drink alcohol. And I had to learn how to drink alcohol because it was free uh, with it and stuff for a whole week. And so, you know, the, the workshops lasted for four hours and one minute, which qualifies for the tax deduction. And then we were on the beach uh, the rest of the time uh, with it. And I think that is repeated uh, every couple of years, too. Um, any, any other questions? Anybody else got any questions before we wrap up? Um, okay, guys. Well, I do appreciate everybody uh, being here. If you have a question, go ahead and drop it into the box. Um, 
and definitely come back to REI USA and sign up for uh, the next uh, lesson uh, so we can go through it. I can show you the critical steps to how to uh, do a short sale in uh, today's uh, economic environment and stuff. Okay, guys, fantastic. On it. Yep, thank you guys. We will see you uh, later with it.